Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today I'm ticking off yet another item from my ever-growing list of things that I need to look at. And uh, this is due to the recent uh, Update 6.1 buffs at HMS Monarch. The King George V that could have been. <laughs> So, when the British were designing the King George V class of battleships, one of the designs actually included 381 or 15 inch uh, gun caliber. And the British at the time had well, signed the Second London Naval Treaty, and that stipulated that you could only put 14 inch guns or 356 millimeter on your battleships. It turned out the British were sort of the only ones following that, and everybody else just kind of went, meh. <laughs> Specifically the Japanese and I believe the Italians. Uh, and at, at that point it was just too late, plus they didn't really have an updated 380mm uh, gun around that they wanted. They only had the older one, uh, the older designs that uh, were used on, say, HMS Hood. And as such, uh, the King George V ended up having the relatively low caliber 356mm guns, but they were quite powerful caliber, or uh, as they say, size is not everything. <laughs> it depends what you're doing with it. And um, also what uh, what you put in it, but now let, let's, <laughs> let's not go any further down that route. So uh, HMS Monarch is what the King George V could have been. And as, as that uh, shows up in Tier 8 as the tech tree, version. There is a, a relatively irritating main gun in here. Uh, irritating in purely historical terms, because this is a 381mm 45 caliber length Mark 7 gun. The British didn't have one of those, because the 381s on the hood were, uh, uh, were uh, 42 calibers in length, and the if they had built this updated 15-inch guns, it would have been a Mark I, not a Mark VII. So what I think has happened here is somebody just went and looked at what the actual King George V had, which was the 14-inch Mark VII, uh, and just upped the caliber. That's not how this works. <laughs> this should have been a Mark I gun, for all we know. Anyway, um, maybe this is the hypothetical post-war modernized gun refit. Who knows? Let's get let's get to it. So obviously the ship the ship never existed. But how does she compare to the actual King George V? I mean it's it's the same hull visually if you look at it. You see that? It's the same ship. <laughs> yeah. So how do they compare in the stats between the two? Well, first thing we notice is we get a better rapid reload. The King George V gets the rapid reload 1, which gives you a 15% boost. The Monarch gets the rapid reload 2, which gives you a 30% boost, which means most likely my timings are going to be completely off on the rapid reload. And I apologize for that in advance for those who get triggered by these things, because I forgot to actually check what the reload timings are for these things <laughs> before I was testing it. But uh, there's only so much time in the world, especially in my weeks, so that's what you're going to get. But yeah, better rapid reload. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same hull, which means that the Monarch at Tier 8 is very much not a battleship. It's a battle cruiser, because the armor is very, very sketchy at this tier, <laughs> with a 12% and 13% Citadel and 13% damage reduction, uh, and a relatively low hit point pool. You're not really going to get an awful lot, uh, a lot, uh, an awful lot out of these things. The maneuverability is the same, pretty much. And yeah, the guns are different. These are larger guns, larger caliber guns. They do they do reload slower, and you've got you've got one fewer, because you only got nine instead of the ten on the King George. Uh, they do they do more damage, however, have a slightly better range and a better fire chance. But um, mm, uh, with the reload, I think it's I think she's sort of on par. With the KGB. The secondaries are technically exactly the same, only that for some mysterious, re uh, mysterious reason they have better range and will do more damage. And here's where the buff came in. Uh, she gets a significantly buffed a small caliber AA. Now this is the small caliber AA. This is the thing that hits the planes after they've been dropping you, <laughs> because it only has a 1.8 kilometer range, which means by the time they start opening up at the incoming wing, they're, they're basically on top of you. But uh, it is a buffed AA. 
She, however, has not gotten the dispersion buff that the King George V has received. And the dispersion on the monarch isn't the greatest. Concealment-wise, she's a little worse, but still has a very, very good concealment. So this is tier 8. And this is, this is also somewhat reflected now in the setup. Because while in the King George V I've gone for full, a, full, a full reload build, with basically a maneuverability setup, because you're still in tier 7 and you get yourself into tier 6 games, uh, the monarch gets into tier 9 games. And she has she does not have the armor to to withstand that in any way, uh, shape or form. So the setup here is quite a little different. But let's uh, let's start at the beginning. You get the choice between torpedo damage reduction, which um, you really you should probably not use, because for those who don't know, this is a ten percent uh, factor. This is not ten percentage points. So you get one point five percent extra torpedo damage reduction. Yeah, nah. Um, much better, main battery, main battery reload and main battery traverse. And then, well, if you were so inclined to put a historical camo on, because for some reason you want to keep the ship, then this is the standard, um, standard battleship setup. So you could kind of go for a completely torpedo damage reduction build, but I would not recommend it because if you get yourself uh, well, it's it's a it's a pretty maneuverable ship, so it's much better to actually boost the things that she's good at rather than trying to trying to mitigate the things that she's not. Uh, what else? Equipment. So this is where it's where it gets a slight a slight bit different and deviates from the standard setup. First of all, I'm using the main battery mod three. Yes, it's not a massive difference, but still it gives me a seven percent dispersion buff, and the dispersion on the monarch can be quite questionable, especially at longer ranges. And uh, that means everything beyond eight kilometers. So while it would kind of be nice to use the main battery mod 2 for a full-on uh, rate of fire build, the dispersion just kind of doesn't feel like. So I've actually bitten the bullet here, proverbially, and uh, used the dispersion mod. The other thing that's a little non-standard is the concealment module in slot 3 instead of the steering. What gives? Well, like I said, this is a battle cruiser. I mean, it, it wasn't, obviously, but it is in the game. So the Wargaming's done the British battleships a bit dirty here, because the British had a very, very good armor, um, very, very high quality armor, and uh, yet the ships are actually relatively poorly armored in the game. So this is a little bit, a bit of a shame, but um, a slightly different playstyle. So uh, the concealment module, because you are getting yourself into tier 9 games, and the, the difference here literally being that people start paying attention. And you're being faced with, um, I don't know, Minnesotas and things like that. That that can get can get real nasty <laughs> if you get yourself spotted in an inopportune moment. So instead of the mobility, I'm going for concealment. You can still go for steering. It's a completely viable choice. But this allows, with a very good base concealment of the ship, uh, for a final set of values for a just under 20 second uh, reload time, which is good. And for a 9.6 kilometer service detection, which is workable. So you can, this allows you to get yourself into positions where you can be effective without necessarily getting half the ship shot off underneath you in the process. The commander I've put in, it's the exact same that I had on the, um, it's, a, it's the exact same commander that I had in the King George. Uh, I haven't gone up to t uh, level 10 yet because, you know, if you start for, if you start afresh, this is what I'm kind of assuming, somebody starts afresh uh, with a British commander and uh, reaches tier, uh, tier 8, you're not going to have the XP for the Master Reloader skill just yet. So for now, we're playing without that. All right, what else have what else do we have to look at? I believe that's pretty much it. Uh, so actually, one thing I haven't looked at in a while is the battle honors. Now, the battle honors, and I'm, I'm mentioning this because there's another British battleship currently in the uh, is it shipyard? I believe it's the shipyard for resources. It's HMS Vanguard, which I will have to re-review again uh, because I haven't looked at the ship in a while, and I think she's been changed a couple of times. Uh, and uh, she costs, I believe, 100 copper, which is a fair amount. And the way you mostly get these resources is either by uh, throwing money at the problem and purchasing gold for opening crates or uh, blitz pass resources, or you go through through uh, through the battle honors, because most of the ships 
uh, and in the tech trees will have some copper somewhere. So you see if you if you do the first one, which is win 15 battles, which is relatively easy to do on the ship, that's uh, that's not a big one. But uh, 160 fires, yes, you'll, you'll get there. And that gives you a copper. You could also destroy 35 cruisers, which you'll get to eventually, which gives you another copper. And if you destroy 25 enemy battleships, which you'll get to eventually, you'll get another two coppers. So that's four coppers out of the Monarch's Battle Honors. And that's how this eventually gets there. So then you only need to do that 25 more times and then you have the 100 copper required for HMS Vanguard. Anyway, let's get, let's get back to it. So uh, I think we've covered most of the things. Now, again, the big difference for me here is the tier because this is a tier eight and you have to sort of play differently in tier eight than you can play in tier seven. I mean, you, you get into tier eight battles in a tier seven battleship as well. And then you gotta be a bit more careful, but uh, you also get into tier six games, which can be just utter mid tier mayhem in, a, in your tier seven battleship. Whereas in this thing, uh, you, you have to spread up to tier nine and uh, you kind of have to compensate for the absolute lack of armor on these things and be a little bit more careful. So let's uh, see that in action. The first game is, I think, a flat out tier eight game, actually. We are uh, up against Lexington, Veneto, Bismarck, Mainz, Cherbourg, Yukikaze, and AZ-23 on a Southern Archipelago in domination. So we can try our new and improved AA. Uh, did it make sense to upgrade the AA on the British ships? Yes, because, you know, British ships had a decent amount of AA and not, not everything was uh, was getting sunk by Japanese torpedo planes <laughs> because they forgot to bring air cover. Anyway, uh, Southern Archipelago. So I am spawning sort of in the middle. I uh, will keep an eye on where everyone's going and probably help out around A uh, at first. There's a Benson over there. We've got Kagro and Takao on the right flank. So I will assume that they will go A, and I'm going to go and, and help out. Now let's talk a little bit about these guns while we're waiting for something to come in range. Um, the dispersion mm, is a bit meh, <laughs> but uh, larger caliber, and uh, still the HE is... Uh, it, the British battleships have an HE gimmick, such that you have a, a longer fuse on the HE, which means you have a much better penetration than you would normally get on a high explosive shells. In return, they get a short fuse armor piercing, which means you have less penetration on the armor piercing than you have on other ships, which does not mean that you shouldn't be using the armor piercing. Uh, they come with HE preloaded, so if you're a destroyer player, assume, just like with every Italian battleship, that um, even somebody who doesn't really know how to use ammo types correctly and just sticks with the standard set uh, is going to hurt you very much. So before the Italian battleships were there, the British with their preloaded HE, and that has changed. They used to come with a, with AP preloaded. Okay, there's the Yukikaze. See if we can get some shots off. Uh, yeah, they, they they come they come dangerous out of the out of the box at this point. So let's get a couple of shots out, and this Persian says, yeah, we got two shots on target. So the HE is obviously going to do nice and full penetrations. You can also use the armor piercing at range against destroyers. Works as well. Well, so. Um, we only got the one destroyer here. There come the uh, obvious Yukikaze torpedoes, which is why I'm already slowing down and turning ship around a little bit. Um, but uh, it, it looks like the enemy team is concentrating around the other side. So given that there's two of these guys here and they can probably take on a single Yukikaze, and I'm gonna help out with the Z-23. And there you see the dispersion in action. <laughs> Or rather, well, the lack of it. Now, again, uh, sorry if my, re my rapid reloads are mistimed. I haven't actually paid attention, but uh, uh, at closer range, uh, we're still not getting an awful lot happening here. We, you can use the you can use the uh, the secondaries. Uh, they're not great, but you can use them. Let's see if we can get some shots off at the mines before it expires. Yes, we can, and we are getting carrier dropped. But uh, as I said, the the AA is not going to prevent an airstrike coming in, but it's going to make it hurt. Now, uh, the one thing that I found that you really want to do in these ships is manual aiming, <laughs> because uh, it doesn't matter so much if you're using the HE, but uh, if you're trying to get deck hits, and now we've got a triple fire in the Bismarck, he's going to go for the Damacon, which means that Wichita is now coming under threat. He's, he's bow in and reversing, but he's getting pushed by Veneto, Bismarck, and and the mines. So I'm gonna put myself in harm's way here because I'm still a battleship, even though I'm just a, well, I'm a battle cruiser, but I still have a battle in the name. 
Uh, and the Bismarck also has now a Benson problem. So, uh, so let's. Um, uh, in fact, the Bismarck probably does not have a Benson problem because the Benson's going all the way the other way. Anyway, uh, the Bismarck is has Damocon the fire at some point in the past. He's now shooting at me, which is perfect. Which means uh, the carrier gets in. That's a perma fire, perma flood, and uh, the cruiser here as well. While the Bismarck is shooting furiously at me. And the carrier is trying to drop me, which is all very much, pre uh, which is all very much preferred to having the Wichita having that fate. Now here comes the Veneto. He's just lost to Bismarck. So uh, let's, uh, well, let's introduce him to the era of, <laughs> to the era of his ways and um, tank some more torpedoes for the, uh, for the cruiser. And then uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get a fire going on the Veneto, because he's just been forced to dodge these incoming torpedoes. Now he is shooting at the at the Wichita, but he is firing uh, semi armor piercing. That's a double fire on the Veneto. I'm not sure if his Damacon's on cooldown, but uh, I'll take it. So uh, he's burning very merrily. And okay, it's triple fire, so I could use the armor piercing at this point. Let's switch over. Uh, also because there's mines over there. I think the Veneto is pretty much dead. So I might actually start taking on the mines because he's got a flanking shot. He's got flanking shots at um, at my cruiser. I just have to stay out of his out of his torpedo range. I think mines has standard German torpedoes, so 5.6. If it was historical, it isn't. So uh, 5.4. So uh, fully broadsiding mines, armor piercing. Yeah, that hurts. And uh, could have hurt a lot more. There comes the carrier again. Uh, but again, uh, this is we have friendly fighters in the air, and uh, single fire. I'm not going to care because there come the torpedo bombers. So we'll, we'll just wait for those to drop. There come the torpedoes. That's, that could be a flood. Uh, there it is. That's what we're waiting with the Damacon for. And we have shot down a grand total so far of uh, 16 planes, while being somewhat semi under. Uh, under carrier attack. Now, that Wichita is dead, which is unfortunate because that means we don't get a Ruffle Storm medal. Uh, they, they have cleaned up the other side, it's just nobody has bothered to take V Cup just yet, but um, we've, we've clearly won this battle. So you can still, you know, play Battleship in this thing and put yourself in harm's way a little bit, but you've got to be really careful because the armor is not the greatest and uh, if you draw focus fight... So let's say if that Veneto and that Bismarck had focused me, I would have been in real trouble because there was no way we were going to burn this thing down in time to uh, to uh, to prevent them from <laughs> from uh, from slapping me pretty pretty hard. So you, you kind of kind of have to time your uh, kind of have to time your or your your make your choices, right? Where where can you go? Like, uh, do they have something else to shoot at? Uh, are they are they focusing their fire? Are they actually playing? in a coordinated manner or are they just kind of um, scattershot roundabouting and um, spreading their fire everywhere which then leads to them once you start focusing the fire which is exactly what the widget and, and me have done um, you you take care of them very very quickly plus you know having a widget next to you gives you an additional boost to the AA and makes it somewhat more impervious to the carrier and use your hit point pool to uh, I mean the little bit of it that you have. Oh, and they did have an AFK ship. So, um, okay, yeah, fair enough. That's, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, at long range, like at these extreme ranges, I mean, Cherbourg, no one's going to uh, accuse the Cherbourg of being a particularly well-armored ship. But um, at these ranges, uh, the armor piercing is, and you see the dispersion being absolutely atrocious here. Uh, at these ranges, the armor piercing is actually uh, not that great. Everyone's trying to farm the, the AFK player. You can't actually torpedo these, but... Um, I mean, I'm getting mostly semi pens, couple of full pens. Uh, it, it's okay, but it's not grand. You do need to get a little bit closer to make the armor piercing work with manual aim really, really well. And I think the Lexington gets to survive. So uh, that wasn't bad, and a well deserved MVP for the Wichita. It it it, uh, it does pay to keep these things alive. They are quite useful. <laughs> So if you're in a battleship and you see one in distress, uh, you know just just uh, put yourself in front if you can, uh, and that kind of helps. But uh, let's go for our, let's go for a second round, and this time around we are top tier. I haven't actually managed to get myself into a tier nine game uh, as much as I've tried, but we are up against Veneto, Roma, Kansas, another Veneto, a Harlem, a Fiji, and a Mayan. Now, in a regular battleship, you'd probably say, okay, Mayan, mm, probably a bit of an issue. Harlem, maybe, if um, if they're skilled. But uh, so I got some dangerous ships out here. The thing is, again, 
as uh, destroyers will be a little bit careful if they have ever encountered a British battleship before, because, like I said, these things now come with HE preloaded, which means even beginner players who don't really know what they're doing just yet are likely to actually have the HE loaded against destroyers, which is not something that otherwise happens in battleships. So if you're counting on over penetrations, that's not going to happen anyway. Uh, just one destroyer, so I'm going to follow that Akatsuki over into A cup. Uh, unless uh, there's an opportunity to make something else happen. And yeah, th that is the concealment, as you can see on the little dotted line on the minimap, means that I can sail around here, and the main is in A, uh, I can sail around here without being spotted. So uh, that uh, that Roma is uh, is not, not going to be able to see me. So given that uh, he's coming in here, I am going to start. I'm going to start unloading because if he can go through the middle and split us up, and I'm not sure if a battleship there in the middle is AFK, uh, I'm going to start and see if I can set some fires on that guy and just do that at range because it is a relatively large target. Uh, I am taking fire from the Kansas. Yeah, that's why I haven't been pushing forward here because there's also the Fiji, so there may be some torpedoes. So we'll, but we'll best just keep our range and uh, see if the, these guys have someone else to shoot at. See, this is what teammates are for. <laughs> Uh, let's keep unloading at the Roma. Again, dispersion being um, somewhat questionable, but that's a double fire. Uh, and he Damacons that, so his Damacons now on cooldown. Uh, there's some weird plane things happening. That's just the Harlem, because this, the planes are starting from some of these islands here by the looks of it. Must be Dutch controlled islands. So uh, Roma is now pushing relatively aggressively with his Damacon on cooldown while being focused by a British battleship and also, and that battleship in, a, in our rear was waking up, also having a second battleship. So that Roma is now taking a very, very bad fight for himself. Because he's not gonna, he's not gonna win that, uh, it's a two-on-one fight. And yes, he has controlled the capture circle, but he's now in double perma fire. There's a full health North Carolina in a, in a, in a close range brawl with him. And uh, he's still getting shot at by a monarch in, in the rear. So um, yeah, that, that's not gonna end well. And uh, that means this central push here has very much not not happened, which means we can now assist a little bit in in A cup because we're not holding it. There's a Kansas and there's the Mahan. And like I mentioned, I am a battle cruiser. And in the absence of any proper cruisers, let's see if the Mahan is paying any attention because uh, he's kind of sitting there. Let's, let's get the guns around. Where are you going? Are you just sitting there? I think now. Okay, he noticed. <laughs> he's like, oh crap, I'm out of here. <laughs> Let's go. So let's see what we can do. But that's again where the dispersion kind of uh, play, plays a trick on you and you get that. Now I do have to be a little bit careful about that Kansas, but I do have some health to spare. So let's see if we can get that Mayhem out of the picture. Because he's sort of the, the thorn in the side and the threat here. We also need to probably relocate uh, towards the other flank. And again, dispersion said, nope. <laughs> yes, I'm broadsiding that Kansas. Okay, where's that Mayhem going? He is stopping behind the island. I think he's, he's expecting uh, Akatorps. But that means <laughs> he's now sitting broadside onto a monarch, and that's an X Mayhem. So that just leaves the Kansas, which is just out of secondary range. And once again, we're making ourselves a little bit scarce. Uh, there's that North Car very useful North Carolina again, which is uh, which is going Leroy Jenkins on the Kansas, which is probably not going to work too well for him. I think we have the Fiji on our left. Uh, that's one fire. Yeah, that's one fire on the Kansas. I'm switching to the armor piercing already because the Akatsuki comes in from the north. And I want to already relocate towards C Cup because our team gets gets hammered over in C and want to make sure we keep B. And that's a Fiji. So there'll be torpedoes in the water. But now I have the armor piercing loaded. And at that range, <laughs> yep. <laughs> you don't do that in a, in a light cruiser. Uh, that is very much a bad idea. And I think the Fiji just realized that. Now I do have to vary my caution speed a little bit because uh, Fiji obviously having not an awful lot of torpedoes, but some of them, and I don't have the, the greatest hit, points pool, hit point pool in the world. But um, uh, yeah, he's now, he's now bobbing and weaving. And uh, where are your torpedoes? And trying to get out of here, but that's not happening. And our destroyer in B Cup is still holding, but I'm not sure for how long because he seems to be now in a very close range engagement. Again, the dispersions kind of, if they're not giving you full broadside, yep, there come the torpedoes. If they're not giving you full broadside, the dispersion is kind of meh. So a cruiser that's actively dodging and kiting away, you're often better off just ignoring. But if they're giving you a nice flat broadside like that, <laughs> no mind if I do. <laughs> and that's an ex Fiji. 
All right, now who's who's next? We've got double Veneto over there. So that black scorn is probably um, in in a world of pain right now because if these guys got the semi armor piercing loaded, then they're way more dangerous than I am. They come to Fiji's torpedoes, which is why he was giving broadside, which is why I'm already moving away. Okay, Veneto. I'm on. Um, I've still got some hit points left, but uh, armor piercing. There comes also the Harlem, so I don't want to push in. I'm going to stick with the armor piercing actually, given that the Veneto is pushing and I can manually aim relatively easily at these ranges and yes. Uh, there come the Harlem's uh, 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 level bombers things and yes, he hasn't realized that I'm reversing so these have missed and otherwise he doesn't seem to be shooting at me and yes, manual aim uh, against battleships with armor piercing, absolutely. If you can hit the, right, if you can hit the decks, even with the relatively sh uh, short fuses on the AP, you are going to put on the hurt. Uh, this just have to be. I'm not sure why. why he's, why, what are you, why am I not getting taking any incoming fire from the Veneto? I'm not sure, but he's dead now. Which just leaves the Harlem, who just probably thought. That, <laughs> hang on a minute. <laughs> a moment ago, there was like a cruiser and two battleships here. Why am I alone right now? <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah. And yes, against cruisers, especially at closer range, is uh, the armor piercing as well. And you can get nice dispersion sometimes, but it, it, is, it is also really, really questionable sometimes, as you can see. So, uh, all in all, uh, Monarch is, is a battle cruiser. You have to manually aim with this ship, unless you're, fire, unless you're firing exclusively high explosive. But if you're firing exclusively high explosive, uh, without manual aim, you're mostly going to splash that into the um, into the belt armor, which isn't going to do an awful lot. Uh, has and is uh, kind of reducing the amount of of damage that you can do. Whereas if you master the manual aim and figure out when to use the armor piercing and when to use the HE, then uh, then you're um, uh, you, you'll be rewarded by the ship actually. And you obviously have to play play very positionally. Uh, hang back a little bit, preserve your hit point pool, uh, do tank if you if you need to, but be aware that your armor is relatively weak and that you will be melting very quickly under focus fire. So uh, that's the Monarch. Uh, a surprisingly fun ship. Now again, the uh, I don't think I don't think they've done an awful lot here in terms of um, of buffs. The AA buff is nice. And it means you're going to shoot a couple more planes down, so it punishes the carrier a bit more, but it's not going to prevent you from taking airstrikes. So if the enemy carrier comes in and focuses you and you're somewhere alone, this is not a ship that works very well being alone necessarily. If you're somewhere alone, then um, you can, you can again be focused down pretty quickly. But uh, if you enjoy sort of battle cruiser play and uh, if you're comfortable with manual aim and you do, you can forgive the occasional uh, kind of weird dispersion, this is actually not a bad ship. So I think it, in this case, it's less of a case of the buff has made this a lot better like it has in with the King George, but more of a me starting to realize what is the proper play style for these kind of things and uh, what they're good for and what they can't do. So uh, if you're happy with that sort of thing, then uh, that is maybe a line for you. Anyway, uh, I will be continuing, I think next week, because I, I already have everything else for this week. Uh, I'll be continuing next week with uh, tier nine and then eventually we'll be rechecking the Conqueror. And I'm also gonna be checking again the Vanguard and the Duke of York is I don't think I've ever touched the Duke of York and the Vanguard's changed a lot since I looked at it last. So there we are. And that's it for me today. Thanks everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.